please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I'll roll, please. Mike Curtis. Here. Amber Brown. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machoto. Here. Gary Farley. Renee Curtis. Here. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. You have the minutes of our last meeting, uh, which was August the 10th. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? We've moved to be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to be approved. Do we have a second? I have a second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Joe Machoto. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. The first item on our agenda, giant garages, is uh, delayed, will not be coming up tonight, so that'll be delayed until next month or whenever they decide to come back with it. So we'll move on to new business. The home's design is requesting a uh, variance relief for a side yard setback of 10 foot. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application BZA 2022-22 is an application filed for the location at 3329 Sulphur Springs Road. It's a request for variance relief of one foot from the side yard setback of 10 feet for a structure located within the RM zone. And this is the property in question. Um, there is a home that has been constructed and is now occupied. Um, by the current homeowner. It was not discovered until after the completion of the construction that the home uh, encroached into the side yard adjoining 3325. It was brought to the contractor's attention and a survey was prepared by SEC indicating that the structure did uh, measure 9.03 feet off of the property line. So they were informed that they had to apply for a variance <coughs> and we posted a sign on the property. And these are photos of the surrounding area. It's a recent subdivision, it's only five lots, the Bluffs at West Fork and three of the lots are waterfront and the applicant or the contractor for the applicant indicated that the vegetation was such and they were trying to pivot the house in a manner to capture the best view of the river um, and it's slightly encroached and this is the corner of the house that encroaches but if you go back to to three feet the it, the 10 foot side yards met so you'll see that in a survey that it's just a slight bit in the front corner of the house that encroaches so these are photos of uh, the house itself and the neighboring house that is the affected property. And if you can see, I tried to walk back there. Uh, they have a retaining wall. This belongs, it looks like a pool area with a retaining wall that belongs to the house next door. And uh, this is the side yard of the house in question. Now, the hardship is is self-created by the contractor. Um, it was a, a detail that was missed during construction. Um, had it never been brought to the contractor's attention, uh, we would probably not be here uh, because the house had received a certificate of occupancy and someone is living in it. So it's not the, the property owner itself um, and modifications to the house would have to occur if this variance is denied, but we did find that it was the minimum variance uh, that would make use of the structure, reasonable use of the structure. So just to clarify, it's only that little corner. It is just that little whole, corner. Not the whole yes. house. Okay, thank you. And um, I advanced to the survey that was prepared, you can see um, there's plenty of side yard over in this corner. It's just that, that sliver right there 
That is. And we did receive some informational calls. Um, once the variance request was described to the callers, they, they did not indicate any issue with the request. Uh, that's, you pointed out, that's on the corner, that's only this, one part. Just, yes, just this okay. little part. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? You'll come forward, please, to the podium. Yes. I want to put you on the spot. Yeah, turn around. Yes. Give us your name and any additional information you'd like to uh, share about My name's Andy them. Holmes. I'm the owner of Homes by Design. I built a house, and we, we like she said, we just tried to pivot just a little bit to um, um, maximize the view of the river. Um, it's about two feet to three feet back, and it's uh, less than a foot over on that front corner. Uh, I don't really know what other information I can answer any questions. I don't know what other information needs to be provided. Do you own the property next door? Uh, no, sir, I do not. What did your neighbor say about this? Uh, he's here if you want to speak to him. I, I built the house for someone else. You built the house for somebody else? Yes, sir. You did not uh, survey it before you started? Yes, sir, we did. Well, I guess I guess I ha I'm having trouble with understanding how the house ended up cattywampus like that. Well, if you were if you would want to pull the uh, picture of the property back up, you might be able to see the river better um, from the back. It was all. Um, I wish uh, I could. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Okay, go back to that the first one then. Okay. The very beginning or the? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. It was just like the survey pictures. For one thing right there on that, on that um, front right is all the, the septic site. So we had to keep it pushed over to the left to stay out of the septic site. And then if you go to that original picture, well, the, just the survey. Oh, the survey, okay. Okay, so that back, the light gray in the back corner, yeah. um, that's the back porch. And so when you're standing on that porch, that's the maximizing the view of the river from the back porch of the house. So they've got a huge back door right there. Um, that little jut out's the fireplace, so it's not obstructing the view. And so it was, it was really just sitting there. We pivoted the house just a little bit to make it fit, uh, or to accommodate the view. And at the time, it was loaded with trees and everything else, so. But you're, but you're, it says, the way I'm looking at it, it looks like to me that you're over the line, right? No, sir. We're, we're over the setbacks. We're, the, the property line is still nine feet, um, ten inches away from, or yeah, three inches away from the, the corner. So we're not over the property line, we're just over the setback. And, okay. And this line is just a distance line. Um, okay. All right. Hey, have you been before us? Well, the other, the, the issues on the other side from what you're pointing at, yeah. I think he's looking at the top. Is this the first property you've had in this situation with us before? Uh, yes, sir. I've only been in here twice. You say twice? Yeah, the first time was over signs and uh, Angler's Retreat. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. you. May be seating. Okay. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. You'll come around, please. Got three minutes. Uh, Grant Lichten Walter, 3325, the property next door, starting back months ago, voiced my concern that the house seemed kind of close. Um, whenever I put my pool in, well, we paid to have our foundation pinned, excuse me, staked, pinned, and before we started digging the pool that was in the picture there next door, we had it redone again just so we could pull the string just to make sure we didn't encroach on anybody. Doing the driveway this week, we pulled the string again. We've done everything we can possibly do. As far as the two things for the reasoning why Mr. Holmes gave for the 
what he did what he did, which is lack of doing, in my opinion, he didn't, he didn't take care of what he needed to do. But the view, one foot's not gonna make a difference. It would have been nice if you look on the other part of this right here that you sent out in it, if you look, he has about 40 feet to the septic. I don't even know why he put the septic over there because that's not even identified as the, as the soil areas. So I think there may be a bigger issue where he didn't put the septic in the septic tank area, or in the, he didn't put the soils in the soil area because the soil area is about 40 feet away from where he put the house. So he had approximately 40 feet to play with there before he even got to the soils, according to this right here that you guys sent out in the mail. So I'm not sure what one, two, three, four, five feet would have been when he's got 40 feet over to the, where the soils show. Now he did put the septic in the side yard, but that may have been due to some other damage that one of his contractors did by not properly clearing the soil sites. He had a, a tr big track hoe in there all over the soil areas. So that may be another issue not to get in the weeds here. Um, so as far as the view, a couple feet would not have made a difference in the view. He had plenty of room there to play with it if he had got it properly staked and then pinned like we did and spend the money that I had to pay, then he would have been where he needed to be. So, and I, I'm the one that brought it to, the, this, to their attention because they were poured their uh, driveway a foot over the property line, not over the setback. They poured the driveway a foot over the property line. I get back in from out of the country, jet lagged and go over there and I'm like, hey guys, this looks like this is, you're on my property. And Mr. Holmes was nice enough to tell me to basically mind my own business and he knew where the property line was. And that's the last words we spoke is for me to shoe on out of the way and he knew what he was doing. Which I think between this, the driveway being over a foot over the property line and the house being a, f a foot over the setback, he did not know what he was doing. Did, excuse me, did you have the property resurveyed after you purchased it or how? Yes, ma'am, we had it done. We had, the, my builder had a SEC come out and stake where the foundation, where the foundation was gonna be. Then once that, with the foundation, there's a little bit of tweaking, which very well could have been what happened with him. I built, we then paid again to have it pinned to make sure we could see it, where in the foundation the corners needed to right. be. Cause it's tight, it is tight over there. But he, he's got the, he, his white, his lot is like that he's playing with is like 40 feet wider than what my lot is. So he had a lot more leeway to deal with. You can see from where the house is all the way up to the soils, even the 10 foot setback, he's got 30 foot to the setback. Easy. How did you remedy the driveway? I, I asked him to saw it, had my lawyer send him a letter, please saw the driveway off. I mean, it's like, not a, wasn't a big deal. It's just kind of like seeing everything that's gone on over there. It's kind of, um, they do what they want and I try to follow the rules kind of situation. You've brought all this information to us. Uh, what would your solution be to this for nine inches of? It's a foot. It's a foot. But um, I don't know. I don't know what the what the options are. Um, an apology would be nice for being the way I was talked to. It would be real nice because um, it's again it, it is what it is. I mean I don't I don't see this council making a move at a foot. So I mean I don't know what the if there's financial remedies. I don't know what the options are. I'm not an attorney or a real estate lawyer. So. That's for you to inform me on. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. I have a staff question. Tanya, was this, not, not to be critical or anything, but was this not caught in foundation inspection? So typically, um, back in the, for years and years and years, we did not require um, property surveys because before we did a foundation inspection, simply because the lots were large and there really did not used to be a question to uh, the setbacks. Recently, the lots have obviously become a lot smaller and the house is a lot bigger. So if we do have a questionable lot, yes, we do require a plot plan, we do require a survey. On an acreage track like this, this is not typical. This is not something that we would have went out. And, and when we go out on these lots, they're acreage tracks and they're, they're overgrown, there's trees and stuff on them. It's really hard to tell where the property line's on. We depend on the builder um, or the permit holder to verify where their setback lines are. This is probably not going to make a big difference one way or the other, so uh, I'll entertain a motion on it. Yeah, 
was it, there was no one else. We'll close the public hearing. Okay, uh, I don't think we're gonna move this house for nine inches. So I'm gonna make a uh, motion that we approve it. You're, say that again. I said, I don't think we need to move this house for nine inches on one corner of the structure, so I'm gonna make a motion to approve. So you're moving that we be approved? Yes, sir. Okay, do we have a second? <laughs> do we have a second? Give a second and you can vote your... I'll second. Have a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis? No. Amber Brown? Yes. Joe Machado? No. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Renee Curtis? No. Zane Cantrell? Yes. Hi. Three, three. Hi. The motion fails and uh, the item is still on the floor for further debate or other motion. So, so, so the, there was, the, the motion didn't pass, so the motion dies. No, it, it was 3-3. Three, three. It was equal vote, so there was no majority vote, so it's back to the floor for determination. If I could ask one more question of Tanya. Sorry, I... That's okay. Um, if this was to be remedied in some form or fashion, um, would what would be the procedure either in moving the house or possibly redrawing a subdivision plat and putting a little notch of land in there a foot wide and paying the, the neighbor for that amount of land or what? Certainly. Um, you know, Danielle might be, an, be able to answer the question on redrawing the line. Yeah. Moving the house would not be feasible, it would not for three foot of okay. point. It, it's, it's just under a foot. It's yeah. tents under a foot. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, to solve it and to make it legal, um, I would imagine redrawing the line would be the optimal solution for it. Yes, and um, it would require both parties to be in agreement Now, we're, we're, uh, it's not on we're at a point. other man's property. It's just outside the setback. That's correct. We're at a point that we can have further discussion on this. Uh, our attorney says that we're three, three to three. It just, it's not approved or, or approved, so it just dies unless somebody wants to change their vote. Any further discussion, Jerry? Well, it's it's not on the other property. It's just outside the setback by nine or 10 inches. I don't think we're gonna make a move the house. Therefore was my motion to approve. I'm afraid if we approve this, we will open a can of worms for every builder to come in and say, oops, I messed up. Can I, make I a agree comment? with Renee, um, but it opens a can of worms if you approve it. So therefore my vote will stay as it is. So not to negate either comment that you two said, um, of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses that we inspect every year, they come before you for a, a variant setback very, very, very seldom. This does not happen very often. And if it does, it's usually an oversight. It's typically not just neglect on the builder. It's typically a genuine oversight. Um, and we do our best to verify what the property lines are and the setback lines are when we're out there. Um, and we certainly become more diligent about it since the lots have become smaller and the houses a lot bigger. So 
Um, I will say this is not a common occurrence is really what I wanted to portray. We do have a few of these occasionally and to her point it's usually a cul-de-sac where the street's not there yet and somebody's missed it six inches or something like that and typically we would approve those. You know, the, I agree with what you said. It, it's not a common error, but it's one that happens out there so from time to time. And uh, I really think that it, it, this is an example of what we need to move on. And, uh, I, I, you know, I don't think this is going to hurt one way or the other, but I, I really hate to see them left like this. I'm gonna change my vote then. Pardon oh, me? I'm gonna change my vote. Okay, we have, uh, do you want to revote this? Or do we? What I would suggest, if Mr. Mishoto, you voted no the last time, is that correct? Yes. So what I would do is you should make the motion okay. to now approve if that is your desire. I'm gonna move that we approve this based on what Zane said. It don't happen that often. And uh, it's not but a few inches. So therefore I moved to approve it. Thank you. Amber, do you second that? Yes, second. Okay, we have a second. I'm gonna ask for the roll to be called again, please. Okay. Mike Curtis? No. Amber Brown? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Renee Curtis? No. Zane Cantrell? Yes. Motion passed. The next item of business is from Eric Medje. Is that right? And this is uh, a request for special exemption for establishment of an accessory dwelling. So what do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2022-24 involves the location at 3219 Marion Davis Drive. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of an accessory dwelling unit involving a property located in the RM zone. And um, this property is less than one acre and that is why uh, you are seeing this request um, automatically if a property wishes to establish an accessory dwelling unit and it's less than an acre they need special exception approval um, the property is served by a step system and so um, on step lots they're typically allowed up to five bedrooms so they will not have any issues as far as septic tanks because it's on the step system. The house will be located uh, towards the back of the property behind the home and it will be occupied by a family member. We found that the request met the criteria for uh, accessory dwelling unit. We did receive two informational calls. No one indicated uh, being in opposition or in favor of the request. This is the primary residence photos of the surrounding property. There is um, an easement towards the back of the property, so whenever they do come uh, to obtain their permits, we'll make sure that they stay out of that easement and the uh, accessory dwelling unit will be located in this corner. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing the, my? I, I have a brief a question. question. What's the side yard setback on that accessory dwelling unit? Accessory structures are allowed to go up to five feet off of the side property line, provided that they're more than three feet from the principal residence. Okay, so we'll, we'll make sure that happens then. Yes. We have some, yeah, come on around, please. Just give us your name and any additional information you want to share about this. Yeah, my name is Eric Made, and I'm with uh, Just Right Construction. And um, just here on behalf of the owners, uh, have a mother-in-law that, uh, or their mother, wants to move into the um, back, build a little structure in the back for her. So um, we're just going through the process to uh, get approval for that uh, dwelling unit. She did the presentation was pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
I don't really have any additional information, but I'll, I'll take any questions that you have. Any design that you approve would meet all setbacks and things of that nature? Yes, sir. Thank you. And even the though it does question. have a, we have the, the five foot, we don't plan on encroaching even coming close to the, the five foot with the size of the dwelling. What is your checks and balances so this other incident doesn't happen again? What is your checks and balances? Um, well, we definitely will get a survey so the, the, the pins will be in the, in the you know, corners of the property. We run a string line down from corner to corner and make sure when our footers and structures is set that the, the pins on the, on the footers are, are out, you know, outside of that setback. I'm a country girl, always heard measure twice, cut once. Yes. Yeah. Very wise. And, and you'll do the same thing with the easement then, the rear easement, make sure that you'll be measuring off the back line the appropriate amount too. Correct, we'll, we'll okay. specify that um, when we do our survey, we'll specify that they'll also pin, the, um, pin that um, drainage easement too, just to make sure we're, we're outside of that. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You may be you. seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Entertain a motion. I move we approve with the a motion what we've to be discussed. Approved. Do we have a second? Renee seconds. Call a roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Amber Brown. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yes, sir. Anything from the board? Thank you so much. Had a quick meeting today. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.